as her father-in-law retreated to his books and his bedchamber. Lady Ellen held a splendid court, staging a series of magnificent tourneys and balls, and filling Castle Rock with artists, mummers, musicians, and reigns. Her brothers, Roger and Reynard, were ever at her side, and offices, honours, and lands were showered upon them, and upon her uncles and cousins and nephews. Lord Gerald's aged fool, the hunchback called Lord Toad, was heard to say that Lady Ellen must surely be a sorceress, for she made it rain inside Castle Rock. It was in the year 236 AC, the pretender Damon Blackfire, third of his name, crossed the narrow sea and landed upon Massey's Hook with Bittersteel and the Golden Company, intent on taking the Iron Throne. King Aegon V summoned his little lords from all across the Seven Kingdoms to oppose him, and the Fourth Blackfire Rebellion began. It ended far more quickly than the pretender might have wished at the Battle of Wentwood Bridge. Afterward, the corpses of the slain Blackfire supporters choked the Wentwater and sent it overflowing its banks. The royalists, in turn, lost fewer than 100 men, but amongst them was a Tion Lannister, the heir to Casterly Rock. The loss of a second of his glorious twins might well have been expected to break and grieve their father, Lord Gerald. But curiously, the opposite seemed to be the case, as Sir Tion's body was laid to rest within Casterly Rock. Gerald the Golden roused himself and took firm hold of the West once more, intent on doing all he could in the time left to prepare his third-born son, the weak-willed and unpromising boy, Titus, to succeed him. The reign of the reigns was at an end. Lady Ellen's brothers soon departed Castle Rock for Castamere, accompanied by many of the other reigns. Lady Ellen remained, but her influence dwindled, while that of Lady Jane grew. Soon the rivalries between Sir Tion's widow and Sir Titus's wife became truly ugly if the rumours set down by Maester Bedlin can be believed. Belden tells us that in 139 AC, Ellen Rain was accused of bedding Titus Lannister, urging him to set aside his wife and marry her instead. However, the young Titus, then 19, found his brother's widow so intimidating that he was unable to perform. Humiliated, he ran back to his wife, confessed and begged her forgiveness. Lady Jane was willing to pardon her young husband, but was less forgiving of her good sister, and did not hesitate to inform Lord Gerald of the incident. Furious, his lordship resolved to rid Castle Rock of Ellen Rain for good, and by all finding her a new husband. Ravens flew, and a hasty match was made. Within a fortnight, Ellen Rain was wed to Walderin Tarbeck, Lord of Tarbeck Hall, the florid, 55-year-old widowed lord of an ancient, honourable, but impoverished house. Ellen Rain, now Lady Tarbeck, departed Castle Rock with her husband, never to return, for the rivalry between her and Lady Jane was not at an end. If anything, it seemed to intensify through what Lord Toad called the War of the Wombs. Though Lady Ellen had not been able to give Sir Tion an heir, she would prove more fertile with Warder and Tarbeck, who, it should be noted, had a number of older sons from his first two marriages. Lady Ellen gave him two daughters and a son. Lady Jane answered with children of her own, the first of whom was a son. He was given the name Tywin, and legend claims that when his grandsire, Lord Gerald, ruffled the baby's golden hair, the child bit his finger. Other children followed in good course, but Tywin, the eldest, was the only grandchild his lordship ever knew. In 244 AC, Gerald the Golden died of a bad bladder, unable to pass water. At the age of 24, Titus Lannister, the eldest surviving son, became Lord of Castle Rock, an office for which he was manifestly unsuited. Lord Titus Lannister had many virtues, Slow to anger and quick to forgive, he saw good in every man, great or small, and was too trusting by half. He was dubbed the Laughing Lion for his jovial manner, and for a time, the West laughed with him. But soon enough, more were laughing at him instead. Where matters of state were concerned, Lord Titus proved weak-willed and indecisive. He had no taste for war, and laughed away insults that would have had most of his forebearers shouting for their swords. Many saw in his weakness an opportunity to grasp power, wealth, and lands for themselves. Some borrowed heavily from Castle Rock, then failed to repay the loans. When it was seen that Lord Titus was willing to extend such debts, even forgive them, common merchants from Lannisport began to beg for loans as well. Lord Titus's edicts were widely ignored, and corruption became widespread. At feasts and balls, 
guests felt free to make mock of his lordship, even to his face. Twisting the lion's tail, this was called. Our young knights and even squires vied with one another to see who could twist the lion's tail the hardest. It is said that no one laughed louder at these japes than Lord Titus himself. Maester Belden, in one of his letters to the Citadel, wrote, His lordship wants only to be loved, so he laughs, and takes no offence and forgives, and bestows honours and offices and lavish gifts on those who mock and defy him, thinking thereby to win their loyalty. Yet the more he laughs and gives, the more they despise him. As the power of House Lannister waned, other houses grew stronger, more defiant and more disorderly, and by 254 AC, even lords beyond the borders of the Westlands had grown aware that the Lion of Castley Rock was no longer a beast to be feared. Late that year, Lord Titus agreed to wed his seven-year-old daughter, Jenna, to a younger son of Walder Frey, Lord of the Crossing. Though but ten years of age, Tywin denounced the betrothal in a scathing terms. Lord Titus did not relent, yet still men could see that the iron-wheeled, fearless child was hard beyond his years and nothing like his amiable father. Not long after, Lord Titus dispatched Tywin to King's Landing to serve as a cupbearer at King Aegon's court. His lordship's second son, Kevin, was sent away as well to serve as a page and later a squire to the Lord of Castamere. Old, rich and powerful, the reigns prospered greatly from Lord Titus's misrule. Roger Rain, the Red Lion, was widely feared for his skill at arms. Many considered him the deadliest sword in all of the Westerlands. His brother, Sir Renyard, was as charming and cunning as Sir Roger was swift and strong. As the reins rose, so too did their close allies, the Tarbecks of Tarbeck Hall. Of the centuries of slow decline, this poor but ancient house had begun to flourish, thanks in large part to the new Lady Tarbeck, the former Ellen Rain. Though she herself remained unwelcome at the rock, Lady Ellen had contrived to extract large sums of gold from House Lannister through her brothers, for Lord Titus found it very hard to refuse the Red Lion. Those funds she had used to restore the crumbling ruin that was Tarbeck Hall, rebuilding its curtain wall, strengthening its towers, and furnishing its keep in splendour to rival that of any castle in the West. In 255 AC, Lord Titus celebrated the birth of his fourth son at Castley Rock, but his joy soon turned to sorrow. His beloved wife, Lady Jane, never recovered from the labour, died within the moon's turn of Bulgarian Lannister's birth. Her loss was a shattering blow to his lordship. From that day forth, no one ever called Titus Lannister the Laughing Lion again.